24, 26, 27, 30, 32, 34, 37, 37.3 miles per hour. Oh my god. 38.9. Woo! Previously I installed a 72 volt controller on my uh, Swagtron scooter which is the same as the Xiaomi M365 and I got it up to 32 miles per hour which is pretty fast but today I have a motor from a Bird 1 electric scooter The motor size is 10 inch so it's bigger in size and it is a lot more powerful than the previous generation motor which is only 8.5 inch. So today's project is to replace the 8.5 inch motor with the 10 inch motor and I also need to install a wooden base to make it bigger so that I can have some space to secure my controller because right now it is being secured by just bungee cord and it looks dangling and it's dangerous. My first concern is whether or not it's going to fit in here because this motor is a little bit bigger. It is 780 millimeter in circumference whereas this one is only 720 millimeter. Alright, I've got a wheel in and the gap between the wheel and the plastic mudguard is exactly 10 millimeter which match my calculation exactly. But the problem is this wheel now is touching the part on the top inside here and all the way along this side. I've got a mudguard out and now there's a new problem. The axle of the new wheel is a little bit bigger than the old one and therefore the nut is a little bit bigger. This is the new one and that's the old one. Fortunately the flat part of the axle it's the same which is 10 millimeter and that's why it fits in here just fine here's the new washer and then the washer doesn't even fit in there so I'm gonna have to cut the piece of plastic a little bit around so that it will fit the washer and also the nut this piece of plastic doesn't serve any purpose so it's okay just to cut it here we go I just cut around the plastic and now the nut fits in here just fine. The width of this wheel is also a little bit bigger. So I just went ahead and stretched out the fork to make it a little bit wider. I've got a wheel in and fits in here just fine. This wire on the wheel has been cut so Next step is to fix this wire, make some connectors, and connect to my controller. I've got a mudguard on, and you can see it's cut from this side up and all the way to the other side. Here it is. And now it's not touching the wheel anymore. I also have to cut the bottom part of the mudguard here because it's touching the base of the scooter down here. And then I use a heat gun to heat it up and then bend the front part upward. And also I also had to bend the back part upward a little bit. Now it works just fine and it's not touching the wheel anymore. Next step is to extend the base a little bit bigger so that I can have something to mount my controller on. And for that use a piece of plywood to mount it right on here and here it is to mount the piece of plywood on here I just have to drill four holes on the base and then I just screw it on but because I already have two existing holes for the seat I just have to drill two more extra holes on the front here and then I can uh, screw it on securely because this part of the seat is taller than the base, uh, just a little bit, about 3 millimeter. You have to cut away this piece of wood, about 3 millimeter, using a planer. And now it would sit flush 
on the base just like that and then uh, I can mount the two screws on here and then two more screws on the front so here it is I got it mounted on and it's very secure the screw goes from the top through the piece of wood through the aluminum base on the bottom here over here on this side I use taper machine screw and I mount it from the bottom up because I want it to be flush with the surface here so that I can mount my controller on here now it's time to install the controller right in here and because there's a gap between the controller and the uh, piece of wood I'm going to have to insert something in the middle there to uh, bridge the gap I'm going to use these aluminum tubings as spacers to bridge the gap and mount it on so here we go it is very secure there's a gap in the middle here so that it will provide proper airflow when the school is moving so it's going to flow from here toward the back and it will cool down the controller and all I have to do now is to tidy up the wires and that should be done here we go everything is nice and neat now time to go for a test drive I want to see what the no load speed is so let's try and see how fast it goes when it's not under load battery voltage is 83 volts .8 miles per hour so almost 50 miles per hour all right ready to go let's turn this on battery voltage 83 volts 82.9 and this time I'm gonna wear a full-size helmet and I'm not gonna take a chance on this So, what are my thoughts for this? I have one word, brutal. My wife has two words, widowmaker. She asked me how fast it goes, I said 39. Do you want to give it a try? And she's like, no thanks. <laughs> well, for me, this is now more fun to ride, has more power and runs much faster. But it's also a lot more dangerous. Giving this to a wrong person would be lethal, seriously. This scooter now goes from 0 to 30 miles per hour in a whopping 6 seconds. Let's roll the tape. Bobby. Bobby this 10 inch motor from the Bird 1 electric scooter is a beast. I put it to maximum load during my test and it doesn't even get warm. It stayed cool the whole time I did the test. The only problem is the motor is on the front and most of the weight is on the back. And because now it has a lot more power, it would skid every time I push the throttle too much. It would be a lot better if this motor was on the rear. But this motor is made for the front and it cannot be installed on the rear without some major modification. The battery, however, gets a little bit too warm. Partly because it's summer now and the weather is already hot. And I put it inside the bag so it gets hot easily. This is a pretty small 1P battery. Even though the cell discharge rate is 20 amp, it looks like it needs a little bit more help. During my test, I ran about 2 miles and I got about 50% left on this 2.5 amp power battery. So the range on this battery is about 4 to 5 miles. That's pretty pathetic. 
but it does make sense because I ran too fast on it. The faster you go, the less efficient it's going to be. So I suppose this scooter would need at least a 2P battery to run comfortably. This piece of plywood down here makes it a little bit more comfortable to ride because I have plenty of room to rest my feet now. The controller is securely mounted on it and it's pretty solid. And on the other side, I have a big space to install an external battery. Here's a Tesla Model 3 21700 cell and it looks like it would fit in here just fine. So my next project is to make an external 80 volt battery out of these Tesla Model 3 batteries. With a bigger battery pack, it would probably give me even more speed and more importantly, longer range. So that's gonna be my next project. Yep, now I can confirm with you, this scooter is a never-ending project. I'll see you next time.